Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're gonna take care of my little dendrobium cherry song as promised in my What's in Bloom video. We are going to unpot it, tidy it up a little bit. I'll show you exactly what the quote unquote issue is. So I thought it would be a great idea to take you along because you never know what you discover when you work with orchids. Each orchid is just a little bit different. This time though, I am actually very, very curious how easy it will be to remove this orchid from this medium. Since, as you know, organic medium, especially bark medium, is not always the easiest one to remove. There is always a chance we're gonna set back the orchid if we are trying to remove all of the bark pieces. So this is the very first orchid that I'm actually unpotting from this medium. It's been in here since last year, I think definitely more than six months. Spoiler, I do already have a funny suspicion it's not gonna be very hard to remove the orchid because I'm using, um, let's say, small to medium bark. And the problem occurs with big bark chunks. So I personally don't believe we're gonna have an issue, we're not gonna sit back the orchid or things of the sorts, but we'll see if that's the case. But before we go ahead and repot it, let me show you exactly what my issue is with this orchid. It is incredibly, incredibly wobbly. Now, if you subscribe to my channel in the past two years, you might not know the little boo-boo that I made with this orchid. By mistake, I managed to separate a few canes. I'll link you to that video down below. I can't really believe what I did, but hey, things happen. It's okay, sometimes you need to amuse yourself. So, some of these canes are not connected. They're just potted together. And one of them decided to put out a keiki instead of a new growth at the base. And well, what happened was this new keiki decided to keep growing and pretty much become the new direction of growth. But it's not really very close to the medium, as you can see. And this is an issue for me, not for the orchid herself, because it's an epiphytic orchid. She likes air, everything is okay. But for me, it's an issue because I cannot maintain this section very well hydrated. I rely on the medium to help me out with delivering water to my orchid. And being that the roots are in the air quite a lot, some of them don't even reach the medium. The tips just dry off and stop growing. And since the orchid doesn't communicate with all of its canes, then I think we're gonna have an issue with this side of the plant. And you can see some of these growths are really tiny and that's because hydration. On this side, everything looks great. You can see the orchid is not wobbly, but here, no, things need to be addressed. Also, you notice my orchid is in bloom. This orchid is pretty much permanently in bloom. There isn't a time in which I can repot without the danger of losing some flowers. So I'll just repot it now, and if some of the buds decide to fall, then that's the way it's gonna be. I'm not gonna cry over it. Before we continue with the video though, great news, merch is up again and we're continuing the collectible series with brand new collectibles and in the same style as we had the Nelly Eiler, now we have the Francis Fox, we have a canvas print and also two types of mugs, one on white, one on black. I know this is super, super late. This was scheduled to appear months ago, but I had some issues with Teespring. I ordered some cups and they never arrived, so I got a little bit freaked out, but the customer service was actually really, really good and they just sent them back again. So I decided to give it another go and for the sake of continuity, at least I wanna do the collectible series with Teespring, which is the company most YouTubers use because it's integrated into YouTube. So my merch store is back up again. You can find the Francis Fox merch. It's limited edition. It will only be available for one month, just like the Nelly Eiler. And in the series, I have two more designs, which will be released throughout the year. And even though I never heard any of you having issues with Teespring, if you do have issues, be sure to contact customer support and also tell me as well, just so I know how delivery goes for you as well, because I want this to be good. But since it's not my company, I cannot really control it but I wanna know what's going on. Anyway, so if you wanna order any of these, do check out the description down below for a link. The Nelly Eiler is gone, it has been available last year. If there is a request, I will do maybe at the end of the year something with all of these designs. I don't know, I'll think about it. All right, enough blabbing. Thank you for listening, enjoy the video. So with that said, the first thing we're gonna do is unpot the orchid. I will change the medium since it's already a little bit old and Let's just see if I'm right when I say it's gonna be easy to remove the medium.
Okay, so the medium doesn't really just fall off the roots, but it's not very stuck to the roots either. Of course, there will be a few pieces stuck here and there, but if you insist a little bit, they will actually come off. See? I will not insist though, because it's not really all that broken down, but yeah, it could have been worse. I'm actually pretty okay with how this medium came off. I'm actually taking more time to remove the sphagnum moss, even though the moss doesn't really attach to roots, because the moss has longer strains. And if a root grows around one of these strains, if I pull it too hard, it's gonna break. So I'm just going to take my time to remove this moss and the bark kind of falls from the roots. Before I move on though, I think I want to separate well, it's already separated this side, but there are some roots which are not alive anymore that are tangled here in between the canes. So I will just cut them. And here we are. So we can see that we do have some roots here which are not looking all that great anymore, but we do have some good roots here as well. Well, it decided to break off on its own. So this is the cakey bush. This orchid is not one piece either. Can we see? I'm not sure if I want to separate it. We'll see if I have too many dead roots, but what I wanna do now is continue to remove this medium. And yeah, I do have some very old roots here that I will need to remove. Even some old canes that I might remove because they're shriveling up. Yeah, I think actually I will separate these two sides because they're not actually connected. It's just the roots that keep them together. Okay, that wasn't hard. And this will actually make cleaning up the root system much easier. As I typically say in my videos, if you want to find the dead roots faster, look at the oldest part of the orchid. And in my case, we can see the direction of growth is this. And luckily for me, the newest cane is the biggest one. This side of the orchid has actually done very well. I can actually remove this side. And yes, I have a little bit of a cakey here, but it's not going to develop. Do you see the base of the pseudobulb is pretty much going away and the pseudobulb itself doesn't look all that good. Yeah, this will not develop. So I can definitely, well, that was easy. I can definitely remove it. I don't know if I'm gonna need my Fiskars. As a little side note, I do believe this orchid has a very thin rhizome. It is very prone to just separating by itself. I think that's why I managed to really mess up its first repotting. Usually sympodial orchids don't have such a thin and flimsy rhizome. It's pretty strong, especially cattleyas. I could not cut a big cattleya rhizome with this thing. I need the garden shears. This one though, you saw how easy it just came apart. So in my defense, I don't think it was only my fault, I think. The orchid was prone to breaking as well. All right, so these are the three divisions that I'm left with. I removed the oldest pseudobulbs because they would have just taken up space in the pot and they don't look all that healthy anymore. They didn't have live roots anymore. And I do believe I have enough segments to create the bush that I used to have back again. Oh, there we have it. This is one of those orchids that I never want to divide, even though, yeah, it's split in three pieces because it's best when it's bushy. Okay, so now for the typical repotting procedure, moss on the bottom and bark in between. Oh wow, look what I found in the bark mix. So if I would have these types of pieces, yes, this would be very hard to remove from the root system because there is a bigger surface upon which the root attached. If the root is only attached in two millimeters, it's really easy to remove. It's not like inorganic medium, which you don't have to remove at all, obviously, but it's not all that bad. Also, I'm not spraying the root system with hydrogen peroxide because this is not a new orchid, and I know for a fact that I don't have snail issues. So for me, there is no point in using hydrogen peroxide. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and repot this orchid really, really fast. Alrighty, so here we are. I also decided to stake the canes since they're still a little bit wobbly. It's a good idea to stabilize them and they are very secure. The flowers now are facing all sorts of weird directions, but that's okay. I do have some more flower spikes on the way. And best of all, this orchid now takes up less space on the shelf. 
Okay, so that was pretty easy. My thought would be that I would show you how to remove the keikis from the canes, but as we could see in this case, they just removed themselves. However, not all keikis will be so easy to remove. And I actually do have a video in which I remove some keikis that are harder to remove. I'll link you to it down below. The resume of that is sometimes you can actually twist the keiki off, but sometimes that will not work and you are going to risk the base of the keiki. If that gets damaged, then the keiki will not survive. It is always better to maybe chop off a little bit of the mother pseudobulb, but have an intact keiki. That is, if you're interested in propagating the keiki. Scars on pseudobulbs are easily treated. They will not look the best, but they will not look all that bad either. So with that said, I do believe it's time to end. Short video today, huh? Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Follow me on my social media. I am keeping up with posting pictures and shorter versions of my videos. Like or dislike this video below. Subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, repottings, and everything orchids. And if you wish to support the channel, do consider visiting the merch store down below. Don't forget, limited edition stuff, one month only. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.